Hi friends, today we are covering the new Sony G, Niji Pro, but if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and swell life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you also want to check out my virtual class schedule and to see what I'm up to outside of YouTube, well then please sign up for my newsletter down below. A huge thank you to Beautylish and Sonia G for sending her new brush. When I saw this on the internet, my heart swelled, what can I say? I'm a huge fan of Sonya G. Actually, I went back to look at my order history on Beautylish and discovered that my first Sonya G purchase happened in October of 2018. So it's been like a four year relationship. <laughs> the Najeeb Pro is dropping on the 23rd, 10 a.m. Pacific, I believe. If that is wrong, I'll correct myself up next to me. Niji is rainbow in Japanese and I truly do think this design likens to the shape of a rainbow. You can see clearly here this beautiful curve along the edge of the brush. Why don't we get into the details, however? The Niji Pro will be sold individually on Beautylish again November 23rd, 10 a.m. Pacific for 85 USD. It is expensive and if it's your first time encountering a brush made by Sonya and not only the Niji, but all of her brushes are made in Japan. There's a high caliber of craftsmanship that's required to make these brushes. So the artisan skill level required to do so just calls for a higher price point as all these brushes are handmade and not machine made. And the bristle type is black and white psycho goat hair, a very soft natural hair, but very efficient with product pickup and makeup blending. And it is perfect permanent and a part of the Pro Series. I don't remember when the Pro Series originally dropped, but one of my most favorite collections from Sonia, and I'm very happy to know that this brush will become a permanent member of that set. Originally, the Pro Series set was designed to be your quick makeup application, thinking out the door. You see the brush, you get the makeup on, and you're done. Efficient, quick and seamless is all about the pro series when it comes to Sonia's inspiration. And if you want to know more about her pro series or any of her other sets, her fundamental sets and her sky sets, again, I would highly recommend that you visit her blog post. But what I'll do is have all the links posted down below so you can head straight to those articles. Sonia wanted to create a brush that sits between the Tom 405, the infamous big mama bronzer brush and a longer denser finishing brush so she came up with the Niji pro and seeing these together i do think it likens to be more of a bronzer brush versus a fan brush which i immediately thought of simply because of the curved design of the Niji. but when put up against the sculpt one which i feel is classic sonya g you can see that the niji is more of a standard brush and not so much a fan brush design as seeing them side by side the sculpt one has just more flair overall more splay and i think design for different tasks although you can use them for similar ones the niji was designed with certain intentions in mind for instance you know you have that bronzer that hard to pick up gel -A to powder texture bronzer that I show here. This is the Tom Ford Bronze Age, which I believe is discontinued, but you can see from the pan how with the soft brush, it could be hard to pick up this texture. With the Niji, however, I picked up so much product and now because of that, I probably will put this bronzer back into rotation simply because I could get the color intensity that I was looking for with the Niji. And as opposed to a softer texture powder that I present here using the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. This is in the shade Medium Dark. Much softer of a powder and the Niji is going to pick up a lot more. So I don't think this type of texture is ideal for the Niji. Another brush that might be more suitable for a softer powder texture will be the Classic Face Pro. It has a little more splay, a little more movement in there. Even the Chikohoro Z9 Classic classic. This is made out of gray squirrel, 
gray squirrel is softer than psycho ho goat it also will not pick up as much product and will leave behind a more natural finish also ideal for buffing as it is very silky soft on the skin will not disturb your makeup however with the niji pro sonia had intentions of creating a hardcore buffer brush which i use here with the sashado radiant loose powder this powder in itself is magnificent it is a new technology that i have not seen from other brands but i love the fact that the Niji is dense, it's strong, but it has beautiful flow and flexibility and you will immediately detect that once you use this on your skin. You can feel the density, you can feel that there's just like a, a hardiness to the brush size and the brush feel, but the blend is beautifully soft. So I do think Sonia captured best of both worlds. The brush embodies incredible strength, but it also possesses a softness that I think sometimes hard to achieve with a brush this size and of this density, but Sonia managed to do it. And you see, after I buffed my cheek products together, the texture left behind is a lot smoother, more radiant. I also wanted to try this brush with blush. Now, although I realized that Sonia's intentions was to primarily have this brush used for buffing and bronzing i thought why not try it with cheek products that also take on the same texture like you saw in the tom ford bronze age bronzer that gelé to powder that might be tough to pick up with a softer brush so i went in with my nars hot treast palette and you can see that the blush textures are that gelé formula i adore the niji to pick up these textures with now i could use these types of blushes more often get the right amount of color payoff because with blush I don't want so much on my cheeks that it looks obvious that it looks overly pigmented but to get the right amount of product pick up from a texture like a gelé one I think ideal to use with the Niji. I also went in with the old school Charlotte Tilbury Love Gasm palette with those cheek products again taking on that same gelé texture. The Niji killed it picked up enough so that I was left behind with shine and color but the color itself did not look overwhelming. However because the Love Gasm blushes do have that that shine and radiance. After I had applied the blushes, I went in with the Shiseido loose powder to buff down the shimmer a little bit so it can appear smoother on my skin. And now I will go to the Niji for finishing. Never would I have thought to use a brush this dense for finishing. I would use, again, the Z9 from Chikohoro, or I would even use the Takumi from Chikohoro, the T1 powder brush. You see the longer bristles just allow for a little more movement. This brush she actually compared to the G and I'll get to comparisons in a minute. Also the Yano series brush, the 01, I feel very appropriate also for buffing. However, if you encounter those products that need a little more moving around, you need for the brush to be a touch more aggressive with its function, with again, how well it can move product. If you have those stubborn textures like the ones found in NARS and Charlotte Tilbury palettes, this is gonna get it moving. And it's like, hey, look smooth, okay? Now, do you need this brush? No. And I say that for any of the brushes I present on my channel. That is the practical answer. If you have a lot of Sony G brushes, we can get into the comparisons to kind of gauge what you think you have already that you could use for, that you would have used with the Niji. If this will be possibly your first Sonia G brush because you've seen the brushes online, you've seen the articles on her blog, and you have not yet decided on that one brush you want to invest in, maybe this will be the one. And also going over different brands because if you've been buying for day like I have, and brushes that can't accomplish the same tasks as the Niji. If you collect Fude, however, that's a totally different story. With that said, I wanted to cover the comparisons that Sonia herself had presented on her blog post. I also pulled out a couple of others if you happen to be wondering about them and how they compare to the Niji. 
excuse me, horns. The first standout comparison I presented earlier is between the Tom Ford 05. You can see from profile that the Tom Ford brush is a lot more bodacious, if you will. It has a lot more bristle, but the shapes are similar. Tom Ford has like that slight taper here and a wide surface area. I'm sorry, it's covered with product. I did not watch this brush, forgive me. Wide surface area and classic, classic bronzer brush. I mean, when you say, well, when I say bronzer brush, my mind goes through several, but one of the standouts is, is the 05. It's dense, but it still has such great flow and it definitely lends that experience that when I was reading Kevin Aquan and all these different makeup books and how they explain applying bronzer using the big fluffy brush to get that three, this is what I think of and, and many brushes like it. And to have something like the Naji is a little more precise. So if you can see from the demo, I'll put it up again, applying the Bronze Age bronzer from Tom Ford, it's gonna have a more precise application of color. And if you want more precision in your bronzer application, then maybe the Naji is worth considering. Here's the thing, you will have fantastic product application immaculate product pickup. It's not just gonna stick to that part of your face. There's enough flow and flexibility in the Naji that it will blend the edges of your bronzer and just blur it out so it can appear soft focus as if you did originally use a much fluffier and bigger brush initially. And Sonia also explained the reason behind this Ferrell's design. You see that it's crimped quite high, but it has a shallow arch here. That is what lends that flexible feel across the skin, again, despite the brush's density when you start to blend. And I found my Ray Mars 26 Radiance brush. So quick story, again, timestamps, if you have not already noticed, they're there if you wanna skip this part. I was given to this by one of my makeup artist friends. And at the time, I was a simp, okay? I did not realize or understand the significance of Ray Morris. And when I saw this brush and I thought, oh, that's cool. Now, now, knowing everything that I do, okay? About Fude, about Sonia, now Ray Morris. Wayne Goss, Chikohoro, like everything. I definitely treated this brush with a lot more respect than I did when I first received it. But I wanted to present this because Sonia had mentioned that this brush, between these two brush designs, she wanted a brush that will sit between and she thought about the Naji. So if you wanna just see these, you just have like this incredible width from the Ray Morris brush, but you also have the fluffiness from the Tom Ford, this is where the Naji comes in, just to give you a little bit of context. Also, the Naji, although big, still fits in standard size pans. Sonia wanted to make sure that although the brush's size might be intimidating at first, it actually is not. It's pretty standard in a powder brush or bronzer brush size. And if you were worried that you would not be able to use this brush with standard size compacts, well, not to fear, you'll be able to. The next comparison she presents is the Naji with the Buffer Pro. Now this was recently reintroduced to the Pro Set handle design. This was formerly known as Face One, which was sold out for a very long time, but now it was back. Sonia writes that the Buffer Pro is denser and more directional she has here on the blog. And you can detect that just by the Buffer Pro's flat surface area. This will hit a wider surface area on the first press, right? Versus the Naji, it has that taper all the way at the top. So you're not gonna get the same points of contacts like you would from the Buffer Pro. I like Buffer Pro with loose powder application, buffing, not so much with cheek product tasks. I would rely on the Naji or other brushes here in the comparison list, like the Master Face. Compared to the Naji, immediately you will see that the Master Face has a round ferrule, so that means you have a more pronounced dome shape on the brush, and here they are head to head. Again, this is just wider, Master Face, more circular, and it says here, Sona writes, that the Master Face is denser, more precise with the placement of your products. I wouldn't use the Master Face with bronzer unless the bronzer has a sheer pigmentation or is difficult to pick up. So again, like I had said, between 
uh, texture like the Tom Ford bronzer and what's found in the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. This will pick up way too much product because it's just denser. Again, because of this circular surface area, it, it's going to throw down some product. So I would only, again, use this for a jelly to powder type of texture. That's tough to pick up with the softer brush. Then a G with my favorite, the Face Pro. Face Pro debuted in the Pro Face Set. My goodness, when I received this brush for the first time, I was just floored by its performance. I never owned a brush with this angle, but with this fluff, right? And I think it's just ideal for so many things. Sonia writes here that the Face Pro is more airy, less dense, and less directional. When your bronzer is more pigmented and bold, the Face Pro is more appropriate since it will allow a more gradual application. I agree with that because again, when looking at these head to head, here you could just detect that flow. The product is not going to apply heavily upon first contact like you would see from the Najit, right? So putting these up against each other, again, this is what you'll get from the Face Pro. This is what you'll get from the Najit. There's a lot more flow from the Face Pro. The Najit will just present a more concentrated placement of product. Next up, we have the Najit Pro and the Sculpt One. Again, love Sculpt One, but Sonia writes that Najit Pro is not a fan brush. It's a regular brush with a little twist. The arched ferrule pushes the bristles on the edges of the brush outwards to let the center of the brush move freely and smoothly. It helps stabilize the pressure that is put on the surface of the brush. She also writes that you notice that there are more layers that exist in the Najit Pro versus the Sculpt One. Sculpt One is fantastic. You can definitely use this for bronzer, which a lot of people do. Also, I think many users of Sonia G rely on the Sculpt One for contouring, right? Because contouring can be tricky, but I think applied more precisely than a bronzer. However, if you're looking for a different bronzing experience than you would find with the Face One or even find with the Tom Ford 05, I think Sculpt One is a nice escape from the norm, especially if you have not used fan brushes before. If maybe you only recognize fan brushes for their highlighting purposes, as seen here in the Fan Pro, you can recognize that immediately, right? Just by its sheer size and the fact that it fits wonderfully here on the cheek bones to see a fan brush this size especially compared to the fan pro you're like what am i going to use this for fantastic for bronzer look at that it just fits right there into the cheekbones and then it has enough movement here you can see how the bristles flow to buff the edges and to smooth the product in a way that will make your bronzer appear sun-kissed in glow and in feel okay the sun-kissed vibes live in this brush. We briefly covered the Chikohoro Takumi 01 powder brush. Compared to the Niji, it definitely is different. You see that the bristles are longer. This takes on more a traditionally designed powder brush. Head on, you have a lot more bristle found in the T1 versus the Niji. I primarily rely on the T1 for Bronzer application, sure. I'm a little more careful with where I place the product on the brush. I feel because the bristles are longer, this does not have the same pickup strength as the Naji, clearly indicated by Naji's shorter bristles. So you definitely have a stronger pickup from those harder to pick up textures where I think T1 is ideal for a softer powder texture. Again, like what's found in Mario's compact. And I would then just tap the edge of the brush and use that to apply the bronzer. So you have a little more precision in your application versus head on because once you do that, you will get a very pronounced splay and that splay will then take the product wherever your bristles come in contact with the skin. So you can definitely experiment with how you use the T1. I love T1 for, I'm sure you've already guessed it, press and loose powder application in a way that will lay down the powder and not disrupt your foundation. It will not look streaky, uneven. It won't have like those marks of, oh, there was a brush that went over that part of your face. 
were you gonna go blend that? One of my favorites. The Refer 25 that takes on a similar shape as the T1 from Chikohoro. And lastly, Sonia presents the comparison between the Naji and Z9. I can't count how many questions I received in deciding whether to get the Z1 or the Z9. My apologies, it looks a little compressed because I did have this stored with a brush guard. So it does flare out quite a bit. In fact, it kind of flares out like the Yano 01, except this has a lot more bristle than the Yano, right? But in terms of how it looks, it does have a lot more splay and it takes on more of a paddle brush type of a design. Sonia writes here that the Z9 is one of her top favorite brushes and the application with the Z9 is much more feathery and lightweight. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but just, just look at the, the bend and the flow of the bristles. This will do well with traditional powder products. If you want substantial product pickup, then you would use this brush with a formula that's softer than the norm. Again, like the Makeup by Mario, standard powder cheek products will also work well with the Z9, but you could use a Z9 also with blush, even if it's designed as a powder brush, because again, it's so light and feathery, you will still have that control when applying a blush product on the apples of your cheeks. Whereas the Naji is just gonna be a little more straightforward with that application, not as cautious as the Z9. And other fan brushes I wanted to present, when I saw Naji for the first time, I thought of the Hakuhoro holiday set where this brush debuted in. I believe I purchased this holiday set in 2018. I forgot the brush blend on this. I don't remember if it's half goat, half squirrel, or as same as the Naji Saikoho, but white and black bristles. This was one of my most fit, I mean, it still is. The softness of this brush and how it's just, amazing for finishing, amazing. Compared to the Naji, however, it's not gonna have the same product pickup. I mean, I would not rely on this for bronzer. I could use it for blush. I think this will make a great blush brush because it's very feathery and wispy here at the end. It does have, I think, moderate density, light to moderate density. So it's not gonna be like a pushover when it comes to product pickup. But for bronzer, I definitely would go with the Naji. The Wayne Goss Holiday Brush, I forgot when this released, but man, this was a hit. I have two of these, okay? I bought two of these because I just loved the multitasking benefits of the Wayne Brush. Again, blush, a little precise for bronzer, but compared to the Hakuhoro brush, it has a little more bristle and it's just tighter packed because it's not as splayed as the Hakuhoro brush. And if you're thinking about this one, this is just totally different from what's found in the Naji Pro. You have, again, more density, more product precision, uh, more aggressive buffing in here than you do with the Wayne Holiday brush. You can do the buffing, a loose or pressed powder application after your foundation has been applied. You could use this for bronzer, although I do think this is a little soft. I have to look back on my video. I'm sure I use this for bronzer because I, again, if you're spending this much money, a oh, brush. You want to see an experiment with how many products you can use your brush with because if again, you wanna make use of these amazing brushes, I totally understand. The Worker Fan from the Face Sky set, again, very different from the Niji not as tightly packed, a lot more wispy. The standout difference is of course, Master Fan is made with all undyed Psycho goat hair, which then speaks to the versatility, right? With undyed Psycho goat hair, you can technically use this with cream or liquid. Although I wouldn't recommend, well, I guess it all depends. If you want a whisper light application of like a tinted moisturizer or a light dose of foundation, you can use the worker fan. It's definitely smaller than the Sculpt One, but bigger than let's say Sculpt Four, which smaller than Sculpt One, but bigger 
than sculpt two, right? So that's an in-between size brush within the Sonia G collection. So even though the Naji looks fan-ish in design, it actually is not considered to be a fan brush. This is more so a bronzer brush and or buffing brush, even though it's curved on the sides, which I just think gives this elegant silhouette to the brush and makes it so easy to use. You could just feel the softness on your skin. And I love it for bronzer. I, I use it over the weekend with my LYS. I used it today with the Tom Ford and Makeup by Mario. Practical Me says, if you already have a bronzer brush that you love, sure you don't need this. If you think there is a slight possibility for you to level up, if you want to go beyond your limits, if you want to go plus ultra, Okay, Deku and I recommend that you just consider the Niji Pro. And that is it, friends. Let me know if this video helped with presenting the demos and the comparisons. Again, this drops tomorrow. And a huge thank you to Sonia G and Beautylish for their generosity. I can't thank them enough. It definitely helps the budget to be sent these comped and to in turn show you the info and show you the different comparisons if you were thinking about grabbing it. My link below will be an affiliated one and you're considering consideration. Again, always thankful for it. I will see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review, tutorial, Sonia G extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.